Awesome, y'all. And they have been praying and seeking the Lord for couple number, what couple number is this? Couple number two. This is all they've known, couple number two, for the last weeks and months. We know them by a different name, and so we're just so excited to hear what the Lord wants to say to them. So would you welcome up Ryan and Sarah Kempf to the platform. Take a deep breath. I'll do it with you. Just take it. See, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Okay, Sarah, I'm going to start with you. Um, I heard the word server about you. I heard you are good at serving others. You, at times, have a harder time receiving when others want to serve you. Um, you are someone who likes to be busy. I heard you're not just good at one thing, but there are many things that you do well. I also saw you as someone who wears a smile no matter what you are going through. I just felt really just drawn to the fact that there just always seems to be a smile on your face. I also um, felt that there has been a pressure you have put on yourself to maintain the peace, which means you have taken on more than your fair share at times because um, you knew that if you just did it, people would be happier and it would relieve the tension. I saw there being in the days ahead this revelation of less is more. I saw there being a passing off of something. I saw the significance in this shift making way for something new. Um, I see possible... Um, I see there being a possibility in some classes that you might be taking to help further um, your education, but not just as a whole, maybe something more specific, but you're going to kind of hone in on something um, specifically. And I also saw that this shift helping in the wrestling that you have felt about what might be next or what maybe God is doing. There is such a purity in your pursuit of God how you desire to see the greater work God is doing and not be distracted at what you feel like is in front of you. And I just heard the words, new level. And what I believe is this new level in your understanding of God's word and a new level in how your influence will be stewarded. Um, I heard, don't try to figure out what does uh, all this mean and try to have a plan. I feel like you might be a planner and that's what you would try to do. Um, what I believe is allow the Holy Spirit to help be your guide as you step into new opportunities. And as you spend time in God's word, you will begin to see what you haven't seen until now. And I believe that there's going to be a new passion that's going to flow from it. But I believe the significance of that will be what you're willing to set aside. And I just really see that there's just been such an openness in your heart to be able to do and obey what you believe that the Lord is saying. And so I just see that there's going to be a greater increase of what the Lord is going to use as a capacity for where you're going to be serving. And I just think that you are someone who can be trusted. I think you are someone that really cares for people well. And I just see you being someone that is going to take such good care of God's people's hearts. And I think that's one of the key things to look for in a leadership and one that's going to really know how to shepherd his people. And so I just hope that you are excited for what God is going to use in this next season. Doesn't she really have the sweetest smile? I mean, really, you do. Okay, Ryan. Ryan, what I heard about you were the words driven, dedicated, and determined. You are a triple threat. I saw you as someone with a good business mind, and I saw you as someone who's very protective over the things you feel are most valuable, and that includes people too, not just possessions. I see you as someone who is an overcomer. I saw this image of someone standing over you. I saw them shaking their finger at you, and they were it was like they were kind of labeling you, but it, it wasn't an encouragement. It was almost like a reprimand, and they were really stacking the deck against you. 
and I felt like you have become very diligent to not let that leave a mark on your self-image. The man you have become wasn't because you were bitter, and it, was, and it wasn't because you wanted to prove them wrong, but it was because you somehow knew that there was a greater purpose in you. I see the way you have viewed that be an influence in the life message that God's going to use you to help people to not live a life built on bitterness or revenge, but on the foundation that each were born with a specific purpose from God. And that no man can take that away from you unless you allow them to. And I just believe that really shows about the character and person that you are, that you let them maybe motivate you, but you didn't build it on a life of trying to prove them wrong, but you wanted to prove it more to yourself. And I heard, <laughs> I heard this song when I was um, praying. I heard this, this song, Footloose. Do you even know that song? Okay, so just bear with me a second, because the, song, the part of that song that came to mind was when it says, everybody cut, everybody cut, Every, you know, and it repeats, and then it just says, everybody cut, foot loose. And what I believe that this is signifying is that there is going to be um, a loosening in the days ahead. What has been hard and weighing you down, I see it being loosened, and you will feel lighter. I see there being brighter days ahead possibly a celebration that will be filled with dancing. But there will be um, a different kind of dance that will be with your wife. I saw there being something more intimate, something more delicate, something more tender between the two of you. I also see a gifting on you as a, uh, that is a pastor over care ministries. And what I believe that you have in your heart is a desire to sit with the hurting people show up in the hard times and say yes to help whatever uh, way that they have a need for. I also saw a removing of what was keeping a distance to that which God was trying to bring close to you. And I saw this image of your hand kind of being like this, like only come this close. I don't want it to be any closer. And I saw your hand being down now at your side in the more relaxed position. And that's what I feel like that demeanor showed is no longer a stiffness, but kind of a, a relaxed an a, a, a opening of being able to receive what it is that God's wanting um, to give to you. And I also um, heard the words, and this is this I want you to pray into, but was the words um, author and speaker. And what I believe that it may entail is that you have a way of helping people see their purpose remove any barriers that are in the way in fulfilling um, the destiny that God has for their life. And I just feel like whether it's through words that you have that you're going to be able to give them through your life story or it's going to be in a, in a setting, don't try to make it too complicated in the capacity, but I believe you have a message that you need to share. And I've, let's clap for him. Yeah. <laughs> And what I feel like that you're going to be instrumental in this, that you're going to help them be able to see that the challenges we face um, on, are only meant to help equip us for the destiny that's ahead of us, not meant to withdraw us. And so I just believe that you're going to really be such a part, that back to that driven. I just see that being something that in the world it can be seen as a neg negative, but you're you're an asset in the body of Christ that, in the way you're going to help drive others to be able to see and go hard after the things of God in their life. All right? Bless you. You're welcome. Hi, guys. <laughs> um, the way the, the Lord works with me is that I, I ask the Lord, um, couple number two, and he gives me a scripture for each of you, and we go from there. And so, Sarah, princess, I love that. This is the scripture. It's from uh, Acts chapter 16. And on the Sabbath day, we went out of the city to the river where prayer was customarily made, and we sat down and we spoke to the women who met there. Now a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Thyatira who worshiped God. The Lord opened her heart to the things that were spoken by Paul. And when she and her household were baptized, she begged us, saying, 
If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. So she persuaded us. <laughs> Sarah, I heard the Holy Spirit say, I have known Sarah and watched Sarah since she was a very little girl. I listened to her sing, and I sang over her and with her before she even knew me. There's been an awareness, a sensitivity to God all of your life, particularly when you were very young. When you heard the gospel, it was as though you finally knew who it was that had been there all, all the time, loving you, watching over you, and calling to you. When you responded to the Lord, you were all in. He has changed everything. Sarah, you are organized, consistent, and dependable. You like order. You're not necessarily bothered by routine. You run a warm, loving, hospitable household. Proverbs 31 says that she watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. This is an apt description of you, Sarah. You are a gracious hostess, and people always feel welcomed and cared for in your home. You are attentive to needs. You anticipate them. You plan ahead. While you prefer to be able to prepare and plan ahead, you are adept at rolling with the punches and improvising. You are a skilled homemaker, but like the virtuous woman of Proverbs 31, you too have your fields and your other enterprises. You are extremely capable, and you are admired for your abilities. Perhaps what is most commendable about you, Sarah, is not what is seen by the public eye, not what others would readily know about you or even say about you, but it is when it is only God who sees and only God who hears the prayers and the petitions of your heart, humble prayers, selfless prayers, contending prayers, prayers of faith, and simple prayers like those of a little girl singing to her audience of one. Finally, and this came this morning at 5 o'clock, like Lydia in the scripture passage, you have a heart open to the word of God and to the leading of the Holy Spirit. I believe that the Lord has been speaking to you regarding a new direction, a new focus, an endeavor for you. He has been laying the foundation in your heart quietly and subtly, but when the time is right, you will know and you will not hesitate. As the word of God says in Psalm 139.5, Lord, you have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. He goes before you and has already prepared your way. Like Lydia, the Lord has found you to be faithful and his presence and his blessing will go with you. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare, lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes for you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. Isaiah 54, 2 and 3. Ryan, the scripture that the Lord gave me is Psalm 112. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. He is gracious, full of compassion, and righteous. A good man deals graciously and lends. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he will not be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. He will not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Ryan, I saw a great house, your house, a house that at first glance might look like many other homes and maybe not be described as, quote, great, but neat, well-kept, busy, full of activity, of coming and going, of life. And then I looked more closely. I saw a foundation in the spirit, formidable, strong, one that would make the SAC headquarters bunker look weak and feeble. I saw footings of faith, of love, of prayer, and of obedience that have been placed and secured by the mercy and the grace of God 
in the construction times of trials and testing. I saw supports and walls that were plumb, strong, and true. The house is filled with light, a light that is clearly seen through its open windows and its doors. The house is appointed with purple, the presence, the joy, the love of the Lord. Ryan, the Lord has established your house as a testament to his goodness and as the fulfillment of his promises to the righteous. Ryan, you're a man of faith. Faith tried and refined by fire, precious above all worldly things. You are a man of God's word. You ask questions, ever learning, and allowing the Holy Spirit to mold and shape you into the image of Jesus. Ryan, you're a man of integrity. You have been faithful in the small things, and the Lord is giving you great things to over oversee and manage as his steward. You are highly esteemed and respected a good and honest man. You are a careful man, deliberate and strategic. You think deeply about things, often wrestling with certain images and thoughts you have had of yourself. Quote, did I make the right choice? Am I really a good dad? The Lord has said to you, he wants to say to you, to declare over you that you are his son. You are his prince. He loves you more than you could ever imagine. And he is ridiculously and unashamedly proud of you, Ryan. Hebrews 12.1 says that we are running a great race surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Ryan, your life is visible to very many people. Your life has had a profound effect on many, most of them of whom you, will, you are totally unaware. In returning to the imagery of your house, it is, and it will become increasingly a haven for those who seek the Lord. Like Nicodemus, people will come to your door in the dark of night, in the darkness of this uh, world, a darkness that would try to obscure and destroy the light of the good news of Christ. To ask you, what is it that gives you hope? What is it that sustains your joy? What is it that you have that I don't? One last observation, Ryan. You're a man who has learned to be strong. You have been told what a true man is, and you have developed toughness, courage, and persistence, integrity, some would call. The Lord is doing something else. He's working in these days, pouring the love, his love into your heart by the Holy Spirit, softening your heart, touching and healing certain places where there is scar tissue, and expanding your ability to see others with compassion and understanding and unconditional love, you are truly becoming a man after God's own heart. God bless you both. How you doing? Good, good. Um, once again, spot on. For those that know Ryan and Sarah, um, as a couple, they um, kind of co-own and are presidents of a construction company. So as you talk about business strategy insight, Ryan leads the charge there as a president of company. He also co-owns a construction company based out of Florida. And as they've seen really God's favor in that area in recent days and um, are just incredible, incredible leaders of people. Sarah here at Papillion leads our women's ministry and does an incredible job at that. And is also waiting the waters of feeling what a potential call from the Lord to step further into that in days ahead as well. And just for the both of you, that landscape is wide open. And we're just so grateful for each of you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we are going to pray. Oh, they also, they've been married for five years. And they have two incredibly cute kids named Charlotte and Joey who are two and like six months, and they are just the best. They're phenomenal parents, and we love them dearly. Awesome. If you now stretch your hand with me as we pray for this incredible, incredible couple. Jesus, thank you for Ryan and for Sarah. God, your precious, precious son 
and daughter. I pray that each word that was spoken today just sinks into the depths of the soil of their hearts and brings fruit in the days ahead as they just continue to ruminate on these words spoken over them today. Jesus, I pray blessing over their continued business endeavors, God, over their household. I echo Pastor Dave's word that their house would be a place where you just like to show off and that people are drawn there because you are there. And so I'm just so grateful for each of these people, these beautiful, beautiful people. God, to be with them, be with Charlotte, and be with Joey in the days ahead. We love you, Lord, and it's in your mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Awesome. Well, now we get a transition to a time of words in season. Uh, the book of Proverbs says, a word in due season, how good it is. And all of us are going through things in our lives that many people may not know about, but God does, and he sees it. And so this time is designed to speak into you. Um, and so I also want to say, if a word is directed at somebody and it leaps in your heart and you're sitting across the room, grab that. God could be speaking to you as well. It doesn't have to be directly to you. That sound good? Awesome. Uh, Megan and Mike, could you? I got a sense, I was, uh, got a sense of Nehemiah in chapter 2. And when he is sent to Jerusalem, before he does anything, he goes out in the nighttime. And he does a tour to look at the walls to see where they've been broken down and where the gates are missing. And um, the word of the Lord came. Uh, I, I really feel this is the word of the Lord over you both. Restore of the breach that in many ways you've been doing your separate things. But the Lord would say, no, you, you are master builders and you're going to be building together. And that you've been in a season of reviewing the walls, a preparation of healing, of learning, of waiting on the Lord, of waiting for words to come true, of prayers to be answered. And the Lord would say, it's time. It's time. So God bless you both. Amen. Hi, can you stand up? What's your name? Debbie. Debbie. Debbie, I believe that you are gifted to see things that others cannot see. You're able to um, see things in the spirit that people are not able to see because they have such a spirit of fear that is blocking their vision from being able to know what God truly has built around them, how he has surrounded them. And I was reminded of the story of Elijah and his servant. And when they were surrounded, the servant could only see the forces that were against them. And Elijah prayed, Lord, open his eyes that he is able to see that those that are for us are greater than those that are against us. And I believe that's the same kind of level of faith and of power that rests on you. And so I just want to encourage you that sometimes we feel the greatest resistance because the enemy is trying to hold us back from what God's wanting to release us that we're anointed and gifted to do. And so I believe there's even words of declaration that you have that will speak to those places of fear, that you're going to be able to help give people eyes to see and, and be able to speak into their situation of what the Lord's going to be able to show you on their behalf. And I believe that this is even a declaration for you that there's things that the Lord has shown you that you have yet to see come to pass in the natural. And I just want to encourage you that you have the level of faith and the Lord is showing you what he is wanting to bring to pass. So keep encouraging yourself with that because I believe that the Lord is showing you ahead to keep encouraging you along the way to not get discouraged where you are now because he's showing what you're praying for, what you're believing for, those 
things are to come. But then use that same level of faith of what you are holding on to and believing to help pull others out of the pit that they can also be able to keep going into the place that God says, yes, I have that ahead for you. Don't stop here because I'm wanting to get you there. And you're going to dispel that spirit of fear and you're going to cast it out and you're going to not let that have any room for getting in the way of what God has for them. All right. Bless you. Right here, sir, would you mind standing up for me? What's your name? Steve. Steve. Steve, when I saw you during worship, the song by you 2 came to mind. I still haven't found what I'm looking for. I still haven't found what I'm looking for. By Bono, and as he sings it, um, I, thought, I just thought of you. And I don't know if it is a big thing, or a little thing that you feel like you still haven't found what you're looking for. But today, Jesus wants to tell you, it's me. I'm here. Every big thing, every little thing, I'm the answer to everything. And so I want to read this verse over you. It's Philippians 4, 6 through 7. It's one of my favorites. It says, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Every request you have, every question you have, can be fulfilled and answered in Jesus. So bless you today. Yeah. Pastor Cole, <laughs> this isn't for you, but it's for someone who's very close to you. Uh, I saw your little Tessa this morning, and um, my heart just leaped all over inside of me, and um, she is, like was mentioned on the platform, a Lydia, a seller of purple, meaning she is full of joy, she's full of grace, she's full of hope, and she is indomitable. Um, wrote down fearless, and the Lord has given her keys. And that little girl is growing, going to grow up to be someone who goes places where other people don't want to go, can't go, or are afraid to go. And she's just fearlessly going to go in carrying the grace and the love and the joy of God. And it will be her superpower. And uh, she will be responsible for showing the love of Christ to, to many, many people who we would marginalize, we would forget, and she won't. She's, she's, the joy of the Lord is her strength and will always be. So God bless you both. As parents, you've got your hands full, but man, she's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Can you stand up? Are you with him? Could you stand up and could you come? What's, what's your names? Tom and Nita. Tom and Nita. I just really like you guys. Um, what I heard for the two of you are you are foundational builders. And what I saw over the two of you is that you have been contenders for what your house is built on. I saw that you guys have um, built principles that have weathered many storms. And you have really been intentional about what you are wanting to be the foundation for how your house is built. And I'm here to tell you that they're good principles. And what I saw the Lord using the two of you is to help other people lay good foundations for how their homes should be built. Because I see the two of you can weather a lot. You are such pillars in the faith. You guys have really not allowed life and the events to get the best of you. And you have really become such anchors in the faith. And what I want to encourage the two of you is 
to invite those in that you feel like the Lord's drawing your eye to or that your heart is feeling burdened by. And it's not in a way that you feel you need to correct them, but you believe that the Lord is going to use you as an investment to help their house be built. So when the winds and the rains come, that they're not going to be washed away in their faith. And so trust. Yes, let's clap for them. You haven't built on a perfect principle, but you have built on a principle that is so tender to the ways of God that you have been open-handed with what you have allowed God to speak, what you have laid, what you have moved, what you have shifted, but you have been consistent in hearing, believing, and obeying. Hearing, believing, obeying, and that is such a foundational truth in building a house on God's word, and that's what the two of you possess, and it is going to be vital in the hearts of people that just are looking for two foundational people that will help them be able to establish principles that will be able to be longstanding for the years to come. All right, bless you both. Tan jacket right here. Can you, yeah, can you stand up? What's your name? Tyler. Are you a NASCAR fan? Me either. So, so we're, we're in the same boat there. <laughs> but as I saw you worshiping this morning, I was thought of a NASCAR race. And in the midst of a NASCAR race, people make a pit stop. And you stop, and then a team goes, and they change out the wheels. And they fill up with gas to get ready, and then they send the car off again. And I felt like God wants to tell you today, you're in a pit stop season right now where he's working on some things. There's, he's changing out some tires. He's getting you some beefed up fuel. But the season of acceleration is coming. And hold on 10 and 2, brother, because it is coming fast and you're going to be used in great ways for God in the days ahead. And just so just hang on this temporary pit stop because you're going to be sent out in the race. You're going to be one of the lead cars in the days ahead. So bless you. You, sir. How are you? What's your name? Austin. Hi, Austin. Do you ladies belong to Austin? Yes, they, yes, <laughs> okay. They, yes, they claim this okay, that's good. Austin, um, there's a story in 2 Samuel chapter 23. Um, King David is in exile. He's hiding, but he has some mighty men. And at one point he says, you know what? I would love, I'm dreaming of, I'm... I'm I'm just seeking after just a cup of cool water from Bethlehem. Well, Bethlehem was a town, that's where Jesus was born, uh, a town that was held by the Philistines, and there was a whole garrison there. And these three mighty men stood up, and without being told, they went and they fought their way through the Philistines, and they got a cup of water, and they brought it back to King David. From, and they, the Bible calls them his mighty men. And I would say to you, Austin, you're a mighty man. God sees you as a mighty man, strong, faithful, true, obedient, a servant. And I just want to bless you in that because that's how he sees you. And Lord, may you use him profoundly that way in Jesus' name. Pastor Nate, I have a word for you. And I called up your wife to just stand because I believe when one is called into ministry, you both are called into ministry. And so this is, this happened before the first service when we were all in here praying. It was truly like I was undone in the spirit when I left after being a part of what we experienced in the pre-service. And this is what I heard for you. Um, you understand that there is no I in team, and you lead in such a way that each person's role is recognized as so important to the body. And I see you breaking off a spirit of entitlement and teaching people how to lead with such a heart of humility 
and to lay down what they believe they deserve and how to truly serve others. I know that you said that you haven't been a campus pastor long, but what you bring in understanding far exceeds what any experience can compete with. You have such a father's heart and I saw you standing with your arms wide open, wanting to embrace anyone that desires to run into them. And I believe keep the desire for God's presence at the forefront. And you can trust that God will direct your steps and he will be diligent in working out the details. People will know when they walk in that this isn't something that you can manufacture because there's a presence that you cultivate that is it speaks to the kind of man that you cultivate in the private. And I just see God elevating the influence of the people that he's, you're going to steward because you aren't going to do it in a way that makes you feel that you finally deserve something, but you truly don't see a person. You see the heart of a person. And that is something that will be a gift to the people that get to come in here because they're going to know you're not going to look at me on the outside, but you're going to look at me of what God's doing in my heart. So bless you. How are we doing time-wise? I know we're probably way, way, way. Are we okay? Uh, so here's the deal. We do have time for a few more, but if you have kids, <laughs> if you would please go and pick them up from kids ministry, our kids workers, they're aware that service could go a little long, but we also want to do our due diligence in relieving them as well. We'll keep going here as we have a few more words, but I do want to encourage you, if you do have kiddos, to go pick them up, and then you can rejoin us as well. I've got a couple of popcorn words. Um, Liz? Liz? Uh, the words, uh, I've got to get the right scripture. Don't want to misquote the Lord. <laughs> um, if I can find it, I wrote it down. Uh, Zephaniah 3.17, and you know this. The Lord your God in the midst of you is mighty. He will rejoice over you with singing. He will dance over you He will uh, with gladness and joy and all of that. I see him doing that with you. I see duets. But what I wanted to say and what I felt like the Holy Spirit said is that you carry revival. You carry revival. And God, God will increasingly use just your presence, your worship, uh, your joy for the Lord um, to bring revival to, to people. And it may be we may have big revival. Lord, bring it on. That's what I have to say. So God bless you. You're, you're awesome. It just really is. And Joe in the booth. <laughs> Let's see. I did write it down. Oh, don't get old, anybody. Uh, uh, it says in Isaiah 42.3, a bruised reed he will not break and a smoking flax he will not quench. He will bring forth justice for truth. I see that you have a great anointing in compassion, in kindness. You have a gentle, sweet spirit. And it's, it's more than you, Joe. The, this is resting on your household your daughters are going to grow up and they're going to carry healing and they're going to carry encouragement and they're going to have a profound effect in people's lives because of compassion, tenderness, gentleness. They'll be able to see what people can't see. They'll be able to hear the Holy Spirit and the anointing flows from you, brother. And it's powerful. It's on your household and there will be a, a heritage of healing and of compassion and mercy in your family. Hi. Can you stand up? What's your name? 
Hi, Joe. Joe, I just have a, a mother's heart that I want to convey to you. And I just want to ask you this. How long will you keep holding on to the thing that God's asking? Will you release it to me? And I just saw here, you would, yes, will you, will you be willing to say, Lord, I've tried and I'm trying to keep it close, but you know that he's been saying, will you, will you give the reins back? Will you less, lessen the grip that you feel so desperately that you need to hold on to? And I would encourage you to allow yourself to go back to the place where that seed was planted, where you allowed yourself to question, can God really be trusted? And that you all of a sudden felt like you needed to do your part and his part, because in some way you attributed that his part failed you. And I believe the Lord is just trying to draw you back in into a way of saying, that's not my heart for you. My heart is to love you. My heart is for good. My heart is to bless you. And it's going to be you that needs to release because God's been there the whole time. But will you open your heart and allow what you have closed off because of the, the wounds from the past, let God bring his refreshing and his Holy Spirit just to shower over you to say, let's try again. Let's build again. And I believe the weight and the heaviness and what you've been carrying, you're going to finally be able to see all of that be just lifted. And there's going to be just something that you're going to like feel that you haven't allowed yourself to feel because you have put too much on yourself. So I'm just inviting you in. Will you say, will you say yes? And will you allow the Lord to have back the reins and say, Lord, I don't know all the answers, but I will put my trust in you. All right. Bless you. Derek, will you stand up, brother? John chapter 1, 45. And Jesus looked and he said to Nathaniel, he said, there is an Israelite in whom there is no guile. And the Lord would say about you, sir, there is a man in whom there is no guile. The word that came to me was, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. You are far more, far more than a doorkeeper in the Lord's house. You are a steward in the Lord's house. And he sees you and you are trusted. You are trusted. You're a good man. You're an honorable man. And you bring honor to his house. And I just want to bless you, Derek. In Jesus' name. I've got a, a couple of very general ones, but I think that they're important. Um, and I want to get my Bible so that I um, actually quote this correctly. <laughs> it's not good to misquote Jesus or misquote the Lord. Just have to find it. There we go. Coming along. If you are facing an absolute impossible situation in your life right now, it might be financial, it might be relational, uh, it might be a diagnosis, um, it might be uh, a decision that you have to make that you absolutely have no idea which way to go, I want you to stand up, would you please? Thank you, Lord. In Zechariah chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, 
And I want to declare this over you. The word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, it is not by might nor by power, but it is by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And then he addresses this impossible situation and he calls it a mountain, a mountain that you can't go over, a mountain that you can't go around, a mountain that you can't go through. And he says, who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, you shall become flat, and we will walk over you straight ahead in victory, amen? And he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. And so whatever your situation is right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare grace to that situation. Lord, would you be the God of breakthrough in that situation? Would you be Baal Perazim, the God of breakthrough? Lord, may they hear the angels, the army of the Lord passing through the mulberry trees over them, knowing that, Lord, you are on the way to bring deliverance. You are on the way to bring provision. You are on the way to bring health and restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare it in his name. Amen? Amen. And lastly, if you are like me and you have wayward children, children who are not walking with Jesus, I want you to stand up. Thank you, Lord. The Lord knows your hearts. The Lord hears your prayers. The Lord keeps every tear in his bottle. This is what the Lord says. Train up a child in the way that they should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. My oldest child is 43 years old. Now, I'm 73 years old, so I'm old, so she has a long ways to go. They all have a long ways to go. And the Lord promises that if you have done that, that they will return to the Lord. He will honor his word and he will honor your training of your child. It says in, in uh, Acts 16.31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved and your household. That includes your children. Amen. Praise God. And then from Isaiah 54, verses 13 and 14, all your children shall be taught by the Lord, a great, and great shall be the peace of your children. In righteousness you shall be established, you shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear, and far from terror, for it shall not come near you. Lord, we claim these promises in your word for every wayward child represented by these precious parents and grandparents in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we set angels around each one of them, we plead your precious blood over each one of them, and we ask, Lord, that you would draw them to yourself you would remind them of your goodness, remind them of your word, remind them of your love that has been so given through their parents and their grandparents. Lord, we claim it. We bind the enemy and all his plans for these kids in the name of Jesus. And we come against every causeless curse in the name of Jesus Christ. And we speak blessing to them. We speak salvation to them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. It is so, so good to be with one another. You, is this good? Did you enjoy yourself this morning? Well, I want to encourage you Sunday night, tonight, and Monday night, there's just going to be more of this at our West Dodge campus. I want to invite you to come. More time for candidates, then more open time for words in season, more open time as we are limited here a little bit on a Sunday morning. So I want to invite you to that. Would you all stand with me? Pray that the Lord blesses and keeps every single one of you as you go. 
that the words that were shared today just get sown deeper into your hearts, that as you depart, just Jesus' beautiful face radiates upon you and your household. We love you. Grace and peace. We will see you tonight. Have a great Sunday.